Eden exists within every soul that is united with God. Expelling the light of God from within expels the soul from Eden and creates a great emptiness. To replace the void created by this disconnection with God, mankind created civilizations, ideas, and religions, seeking material wealth, power, and sexual satisfaction. Desire for sensation became the new God and only served to further degenerate mankind until man was left with only a trace of the divine inside. The secret knowledge contained in the story of Adam and Eve can be found hidden in mythological and religious stories from around the world. In story after story are found the enlightened or empowered heroes brought to ruin by their lust. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, long hair was the symbol of sexual purity or chastity. Thus, when Delilah cuts the hair of Samson, this is a symbol of lustful seduction. Samson lost his power when he could not control his sexual desire. In the epic Indian classic, the Mahabharata, the immortal Pandu is warned never to release the sexual energy. But when tempted by a beautiful woman, he proves incapable of controlling his lust, and he throws away his immortality and dies. By expelling the sexual energy, humanity lost their inner senses and were no longer able to perceive God directly. Thus, when humanity willingly expelled the subtle energies that supported a direct relationship with God, it was simultaneously cast out of Eden, the paradise of the fourth dimension. And mankind descended into the wilderness, the physical world, this third dimension, the world of suffering. He drove the man out and stationed east of the Garden of Eden, the Cherubim and the fiery ever-turning sword to guard the way to the Tree of Life. Adam and Eve were cast out of Eden. However, the gateway back to Eden and the Tree of Life was neither closed nor locked. Instead, Jehovah Elohim sent a Cherubim with a flaming sword to guard the entrance. The entrance to the Garden of Eden is the same door through which Adam and Eve departed. Humanity is not locked out of Eden, but a caro beam is left to grant entrance only to those whom have earned the right to return, and only those whom have conquered the tempting serpent have earned that right. If you bring forth what is within you, what is within you will save you. But if you do not bring forth what is within you, what is within you will destroy you. The serpent is within. The serpent is the sexual fire. It is a very powerful atomic energy with a polarity that can be used either to create or to destroy. Because this energy is so powerful, the individual requires great willpower in order to overcome the lure of this serpent. The temptation of this serpent is through material pleasure and self-edification. This tempting aspect of the serpent is Lucifer, or what in Hebrew is called Shaitan, the enemy. Because Shaitan is a fiery serpent that is ignited and empowered through the sexual act, it is always tempting mankind to know, to have the sexual connection. 
The serpent itself is power. The individual decides through their actions whether it will be a power of good or evil. It is the difference between obeying the serpent or controlling it. The lesson contained in the story of the serpent is that only those with the strength of will to control the cravings of their mind can raise the energetic serpent to transform themselves from intellectual animals into true human beings. It is necessary to conquer the dragon that lies within, as religions and mystical traditions have told for endless ages. The dragon is one's own lust, passion, anger, pride, fear, and envy. Thus exists the Hydra of many heads and the Medusa. The deceptions of the serpent are legion. The great heroes and gods always have the serpent under their power. And it is the serpent who protects them and conquers their enemies. In contrast to the serpent that tempted Eve, causing her to fall, there is the serpent of Moses, who commanded its power and conquered the Egyptians, accomplishing great miracles. The Egyptians had degenerated into black magic, and Moses appeared to deliver the true teachings. The Hebrew Mem signifies water. Shin is fire and He is the womb. So the name Moshe or Moses means born of water and fire. The Aztec Christ, Quetzalcoatl, and the Tibetan Padmasambhava were also both born of the waters. Unless a man be born again of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Moses was born again, which means that he created the soul, symbolized by the illuminated tree of life, the burning bush, that he saw in the wilderness. The enlightened tree unified him with his inner father. Thus, he received the commands of God directly. Moses needed to free the people of Israel from Egypt. Egypt represents the degenerated mind of man, and the Pharaoh is the tyrant that jealousy rules over this man-made civilization of material power and desire. Israel is a compound word. Is is from Isis, the Egyptian divine mother. Ra is the Egyptian divine father. And El is Hebrew for God. So when the nation of Israel is trapped in slavery, this is a symbol of one's own inner divinity trapped within the degenerated mind. Moses was told to take the rod, the spinal column, the tree of life in his own body, and it became a serpent, the serpent of the Kundalini. His serpent was more powerful than the negative serpent of the Egyptians. Thus, this story symbolizes the duality of the sexual force. Only the positive serpent, under the service of God, can free the soul from suffering. This is clearly represented in Egyptian art. The positive serpent protects, while the negative serpent must be dominated and conquered. Sex can be lustful or chaste. Sex can create or destroy. Sex can be animal or worshipful. Sex can raise a fiery chariot to God or pave a road to the abyss. Sex is the natural function of the human being, but only sex as performed under the guidance of divine will. Sex performed under the guidance of the mind creates suffering, pain, and spiritual death. 
This is self-evident in those who seek happiness in sex. As with any desire of the mind, sexual desire can never be satisfied. Desire is never satisfied by the enjoyment of lust, just as fire surely increases the more one gives it fuel. And the serpent said to the woman, You are not going to die, but the Elohim know that as soon as you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like divine beings who know good and bad. Whether the individual is in love or lust, the serpent is powerful because all of the blood is circulating with that fire within the body. And when two people unite sexually, the internal polarity is balanced and enhanced. A tremendous energy is excited that permeates the couple with the power to create. This is the fire of the Holy Spirit, as demonstrated by the tongues of fire raised above the apostles. This is the Hebrew character Shin, which represents the fire of God, the fire of the Holy Spirit, and the fire of the Christ. Shin, with its three points, embodies the three forces of creation. In this connection, the couple is appreciating the tree of knowledge, to know. To conquer the desire for the orgasm is to conquer the tempting serpent of Eve. As the serpent is always on the tree of knowledge of good and evil, this is the only place to conquer it and gain true knowledge through sexuality. When you unite male and female into one, then you will enter into the kingdom. The kingdom in Hebrew is Melkut. This is the first sephira on the tree of life. It is where the real work physically begins as man and wife. Humanity left Eden as a couple, and as a couple they must return. This is illustrated in the ancient acknowledgement of the need for both priest and priestess, the couple that must work together in order to reach perfection. Couples that conquer the desire to eat the fruit of knowledge internally gather up all of that energy. And gradually that energy can be used to create something within. Rather than feeding their own lust, they can restore their own inner Eve the fallen serpent and from there they may then raise the serpent of the kundalini they can illuminate the tree of life which exists within the human body the spinal column and they can create divine light within themselves and return to the direct knowledge of their own inner God this is why all of the world's great religions emphasize chastity. Chastity does not mean abstention from sex. It means abstention from the orgasm, from spilling the divine energy that is the Holy Spirit. The sexual act performed in the usual way may give a slight notion of the nature of this higher consciousness. But more than that, it cannot do, since the energy, instead of being trapped and put into use, is expended, creating a new physical body instead of spiritual consciousness. Sex is not only important for spiritual advancement, it is a necessity. It is through sexual energy that the vehicle of the human soul is born. This is what is meant when the biblical Jesus explains to Nicodemus that he must be born again. Unless a man be born again of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. He must give birth internally to his soul from the water and the Holy Spirit. With patience ye shall possess thy souls. 
Jesus of Nazareth never said that the soul already exists within a man. Instead, he said it must be born of the water and the spirit. In all of creation, everything is born of sex. Thus, the soul, the fiery chariot of heaven, must also be born of sex. The soul must be born within a person, born of the waters of sex and the fire of the spirit. When Jesus met the Samaritan woman at the well, he told her of a water that gives eternal life. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I may not thirst, nor come hither to draw. Jesus saith to her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. He was prepared to tell her the secret of alchemy, the great arcanum. That secret, allegorized in countless ancient stories, is that the waters of eternal life, the fountain of youth, is developed between husband and wife in chastity. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidst thou truly. She was not faithful to one man, and thus she was not prepared to receive the true teaching. But a man who commits adultery lacks judgment. Whoever does so destroys himself. Jesus taught the path that he practiced, the path of the perfect matrimony. A perfect matrimony requires an alchemical marriage between man and wife. And the companion of the Savior was Mary Magdalene. He loved her more than all the disciples and used to kiss her often on her mouth. For various causes, such direct references to Jesus' intimate relationship with his wife were edited out of the Christian doctrine. But the writers of the Bible anticipated such adulterations of the text and veiled the true teachings in symbols and allegory. So although Jesus' marital relationship with Mary Magdalene was removed, the teaching has been maintained that his first miracle was at a wedding feast in which he celebrated the marriage of a man and wife by transmuting water into a delicious wine, a miracle of alchemy that can only exist within the perfect matrimony. The Hebrew character Shin is the symbol for fire, it is very revealing to see that when man and woman, Adam, Yod, and Eve, Heve, are joined through the sexual fire, the character Shin, the result is Yeshua, Jesus, the Savior. Likewise, Christ is derived from the Greek root Krestos, whose esoteric meaning is fire. The term Jesus Christ is not a personal name. It is a title, Yeshua Christos, meaning Savior, fire. I am the way. Jesus of Nazareth, by working intensely with his wife, incarnated the fire of the Christ, as did Moses and many others. All of them worked with a spouse. All of them knew 
and taught the great arcanum. The Christ is a universal energy that saves those who are pure enough to receive it. Man and wife, through immaculate sexuality and the grace of God, create the Savior, the Christic fire. The containment and transmutation of the potent sexual energy can restore the fallen serpent of Eve. From there the fire of the Holy Spirit can be awakened, raising the serpent upon the staff. This is the Kundalini, the positive, life-giving serpent. It can only be awakened through chastity and only by husband and wife. A single person cannot awaken the Kundalini. The Kundalini is not a blind mechanical force. It is the active intelligence of God and can only manifest within those who purify themselves of all that is against God, pride, envy, lust, greed, etc. The fire of the Kundalini awakens only with moral progress. Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. The revelation of Saint John explains what is necessary in order to return to heaven. But the answer is deliberately veiled in symbolism and metaphors. That is why so few understand this book. It is said that 144,000 will be saved and taken to heaven. This number is symbolic. Every Hebrew letter also represents a number. The letters that spell Adam also give the numbers 1, 4, and 40. Thus the meaning is that only those who have restored the innocence of Adam within themselves will return to Eden. Likewise, when we Kabbalistically add the numbers of the name of Adam, the result is nine. The Sephira, Yasad, or the foundation, the sexual energy. The secret to becoming the perfect Adam is in the ninth sphere. The fire of the sexual energy must create, or it will destroy. This very potent energy cannot be contained, and if repressed, will seek expression destructively, internally through the mind, through anger, or through sexual degeneration. This is evidenced by the infamous perversions of priests around the world, in all religions and the rampant fanaticism that has destroyed so many spiritual movements. In order to utilize the sexual energy effectively, it must be transmuted into spiritual energy. This is accomplished by connecting sexually with the spouse, without spilling the energy through the orgasm. Or if one is single, learning to control the energy through ancient methods long forgotten by contemporary priests in the Western traditions. Adam must be born from the sexual water and the fire of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, there cannot be a return to Eden. No one whose testes are crushed or whose member is cut off shall be admitted into the congregation of Jehovah. Entrance back into Eden, the congregation of the Lord, is through the proper use of sexuality. Likewise, the entrance into suffering and pain is through the improper use of sexuality. Sex can be used to create good within a person, or it can be used to create evil. It is the choice of the individual to serve the virgin or the whore. One cannot serve two masters. 
love and lust can never mix. God cannot mix with the devil. This is symbolized by the sixth card of the tarot, indecision. One chooses his path by his actions. The great arcanum is the secret knowledge of Tantra. There are three types of Tantrism, black, gray, and white. Stimulation of sexual sensation and identification with lust is black Tantra. Any school or religion that teaches how to awaken the consciousness through having the orgasm is teaching black Tantra. Black Tantra is responsible for all of the suffering of humanity. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. The fiery serpents are the inverted serpents of the Kunda buffer. The suffering and pain caused by these serpents are the result of identification and desire. The resulting death of so many Israelites refers to spiritual death. Gray Tantra teaches that one should only orgasm occasionally. This teaching inevitably leads one to Black Tantra. White Tantra always teaches three factors. The elimination of desire, the creation of the soul, and sacrifice for others. All White Tantra teaches to renounce the orgasm. White Tantra, the elimination of desire, is the road back to Eden. Mankind must return to Eden through the same door it exited, through sexuality. Mankind must return to the state of purity and innocence it once had in order to transcend suffering and pain. But first, it is necessary to recognize one's mistakes and then act to change them. This is the definition of true penance. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Suffering is the result of being tempted by the serpent. Anyone who wants to be healed of the damage caused by the tempting serpent must be healed as the Israelites were by the bronze serpent of Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass, that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of bronze, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass, that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of bronze, he lived. Bronze is an alloy of two metals, copper and tin, masculine and feminine. The bronze serpent is created when the two polarities are brought together in purity. This is the great secret knowledge of alchemy, the chemistry of God. The prefix al is from the Arabic word Allah, as in Hebrew, El, which means God. Chem means to fuse or cast a metal. So alchemy is the method to fuse oneself once again with God. You will succeed at it if you take pains to be what you should be, that is to say, pious, gentle, benign, charitable, and God-fearing. White Tantra the path of sanctity and chastity frees the consciousness from the ego, awakening the pristine consciousness, free of all animal desire. Black Tantra, the path of identification and fornication, awakens the consciousness that is trapped in the ego, leaving the soul trapped in suffering. 
And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awaken, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. To acquire true spiritual awakening, it is necessary to defy the tempting serpent and raise the fire of the Holy Spirit to create the human soul. This is the key to the ancient mystery of alchemy, to transmute the lead of the ego and desire into the spiritual gold of the consciousness. When the sexual fire of Yasod is elevated through the knowledge of Gnosis, Da'at, the great arcanum, the knowledge of the mystery of mysteries, one can return to the direct knowledge of one's own inner star, the light of the world. And the Elohim said, Let there be light, and there was light. All of existence was created with the light of the cosmic Christ, the fire of the Holy Spirit, the sexual energy. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness of the materialistic mind cannot comprehend the light of the Christ. It is necessary to transcend the mind and awaken the consciousness. Light is necessary to see through the darkness. In order to incarnate light, it is mandatory to transcend the animal desires that fill the mind. Therefore, one must understand and act upon the mystery of Adam and Eve. Enter in through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many are they who enter in through it. For narrow is the gate, and straighten the way that leads to life, and they are few who find it.